This is World Civilization. My name is Dr. Long. This video is entitled Religion in the Modern Context. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the Enlightenment was the dominant intellectual movement in Europe. The Enlightenment was an intellectual movement that stressed reason and science. It was also critical of absolute monarchy, censorship, and religious intolerance, especially relig religious intolerance associated with state-sponsored churches. The Enlightenment, and particularly the French Revolution that followed it, also had an anti-religious element to it. In addition, since the, since, the Enlightenment came, uh, since the Enlightenment, many important thinkers in Europe, such as Auguste Comte, Karl Marx, Max Weber, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Sigmund Freud, have argued that as societies modernize, religion will inevitably decline and perhaps even die out. Now this idea that as societies modernizes, religion declines, is called the secularization thesis. Many historians in the 19th and 20th centuries, especially Marxist historians such as Eric Hobsbawm, subscribe to this idea. For Europe, there certainly is a good deal of truth to the secularization thesis. In Europe, during the 19th and 20th centuries, religion did lose much of its influence. Church attendance declined in many countries, as did the number of professing believers. Also, the rise of the nation-state as the primary focus of political identity led to the state taking over many things that once were the exclusive domain of churches, uh, things that affected people's ordinary lives, such as marriage, burial, medical care, and schooling. These had all been done by churches in the 19th century, increasingly, increasingly the state took over that function. And while religion went hand in hand with some nationalist movements, for instance in Ireland and Poland, Nationalism and the nation-state in nations such as Italy, Germany, and France were often hostile to religion. In some ways, churches in, in Europe reacted defensively in the 19th century. For example, the Catholic Church's condemnations of modernity and the First Vatican Council of 1870 that proclaimed the doctrine of papal infallibility were in many ways defensive measures against the forces of modernity. Clearly, secularization was reality in Europe and churches were on the defensive. Churches also had a hard time adapting to urbanization during the Industrial Revolution, and one of the reasons many churches saw declines in attendance is because they simply did not build enough church buildings in growing cities for people to attend. However, in recent years, some historians have come to question aspects of the secularization thesis as overly simplistic in its approach to European history and to modernity. Moreover, the secularization thesis uh, that secularization and the decline of religion inevitably come with modernization is increasingly seen as Eurocentric and inaccurate in dealing with many non-Western parts of the world. In terms of Europe itself, historian Michael Burley has pointed out that many of the supposed secular ideologies that claim to be based on reason and science were actually fairly utopian. As such, ideologies such as lo logical positivism, nationalism, and Marxism actually had strong resemblances to religion themselves, or in Burley's terminology, were substitutes for religion or political religions. For instance, the logical positivism of, August, of, of French thinker Auguste Comte asserts that the only real knowledge is scientific knowledge. Yet this is an assertion that cannot be proven scientifically and actually places a great deal of faith in science, which is ironic considering it, it attempts to, to critique religion. More importantly, many elements of Marxism resemble or parallel Christianity. Marxism's notion of inequality and class struggle are akin to Christianity's notion of sin and the fall of, of humanity. Likewise, the party and the working class in Marxism is akin to the church and believers in Christianity. Finally, the revolution that Marx predicted and the classist utopia that he said would follow is akin to the second coming of Jesus and the last judgment and the new heaven and new earth as in Christianity. Now Marxism was an especially important force in the late 19th and 20th centuries. Arguably, Marxism, which is materialist and officially atheistic, particularly as aspired by anti-religious communist regimes, did the most to advance secularization in Europe. Communist regimes in many cases brutally repressed religion. Still, Secularization in Europe was uneven and not as linear as the secular, secularization thesis argues. Many areas of Europe did not secularize until the 1960s, 
which saw major changes in attitudes about consumption, entertainment, and sexuality. In addition, the 19th century saw the greatest period of church construction in the Western world since the High Middle Ages. The early 20th century also was the beginning of a new type of Protestant Christianity, Pentecostalism. Pentecostalism stresses the work of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and a powerful emotional experiential faith. Pentecostalism began with a small group of people in Los Angeles in 1906 in what was known as the Azusa Street Revival. Since that time, Pentecostalism has spread throughout the world, and today, a little over 100 years later, has nearly 280 million adherents worldwide, or nearly 4% of the world's population. Speaking of spreading, the 19th and 20th centuries were also periods in which European and American churches, both Catholic and Protestant, sent out many missionaries to Africa and Asia. By the 20th century, these missionary activities yielded considerable results. For instance, in 1900, only 9 million people, or 9% of the population, were Christians in Sub-Saharan Africa. By 2000, this number had risen to 335 million people, or 45% of the population in Sub-Saharan Africa. So clearly, Christianity grew by leaps and bounds due to missionary activities uh, between 1900 and 2000 in Africa. Now likewise, Christianity has experienced strong growth in Latin America and Asia, especially the Philippines, South Africa, and China. By some estimates, the number of Christians is growing so strongly in China that China could have more church goers in the United States by 2030. Moreover, while Europe on the whole did become strongly secular by the end of the 20th century, some parts of Europe still have strong pockets of religi re religiosity. And many immigrants to Europe in recent decades are either practicing Christians or practicing Muslims. Also, as historian C.A. Bailey argues, one of the biggest problems of the secularization thesis is that it only posits one route to modernity. For Bailey, there are, there are multiple routes to modernity, religious, secular, Western, non-Western, and otherwise. Bailey notes that in many ways, the 19th and 20th centuries saw a global revival of religions. Bailey argue, or also argues this came with greater emphasis on the authority of religious leaders and the formalization of religious doctrines. Many different religions were quite adept at using modern media to their benefit. In the 19th century, the print media was especially important to Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism. In the 20th and 21st centuries, these world religions were also quite skilled in using newer forms of mass media to spread their messages, such as the radio, television, and in more recent years, the internet. Asian religions such as Hinduism and Buddhism in the 19th century used the print media and temple schools to more closely define their ancient texts, beliefs, and rituals. According to Bailey, this was so profound that, quote, in one sense, one could say that the Hindu and Buddhist doctrine were actually created in the 19th century as a, as, as a consequence of the print revolution, end quote. Hinduism in particular became a more formalized and doctrinally defined religion in this period. In the 20th century, this in part gave rise to a powerful form of Hindu nationalism in India. Now likewise, Islam saw a tremendous boom in printed material beginning in the late 19th century with increasing printings of the Quran. Also, for the first time, sermons, articles, and other religious works were printed for Muslims in languages such as Urdu, Persian, and Malay. Islam also spread to parts of Western and Sub-Saharan Africa, and what, what is now countries such as Nigeria and the Sudan. In many ways, like Christianity, Islam has grown in the 19th and 20th centuries because of its growth in Africa. Finally, as with Christianity, the 19th century was a huge period of mosque construction all over the Islamic world. In addition to the modern media, world religions proved quite skillful at using modern means of transportation to facilitate pilgrimages. A pilgrimage is a trip to a religious site, a practice proponents of the secularization thesis would see as a pre-modern pre activity and destined to fade in the face of modernity. However, uh, the opposite has proved the case. Since the 19th century, tens of millions of Catholic pilgrims have traveled to places such as Lourdes, France, and the Vatican. Christian and Jewish pilgrims have also traveled to Israel since 1945. 
In addition, the number of Muslim pilgrims to Mecca and Medina each year has greatly increased, with about 15 million visitors each year today. Finally, religion has played a role in the societies and politics of many nations since the 19th century. Many charitable organizations and schools in the Western world are still religious in nature. In, the West, in Western Europe, centrist Christian democratic parties have been important to the politics of many nations, especially Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. In Eastern Europe, churches played an, an important role in resisting oppressive communist regimes during the Cold War. In Poland during the 1980s, Pope John Paul II, who himself was Polish, was much more popular among Poles than the communist regime. Religion was also a factor in violent conflicts. For example, the Spanish Civil War of the 1930s and the conflict in Northern Ireland between Protestants and Catholics all had religious aspects. In the United States, religion also played an important role in the civil rights movement of the 1960s and many civil rights leaders such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. were pastors. Socially conservative Protestants and Catholics have likewise become important players in the Republican Party since the 1970s. In India, Hindu nationalists has also become an important factor. Since India won its independence in 1947, Hindus and Muslims have increasingly clashed in India, and it has also led to wars and tension between majority Hindu India and majority Muslim Pakistan. And this is a major flashpoint in the world today. Uh, the, the conflict between India and, and Pakistan. For its part, the Islamic world has experienced a number of politically active Islamic groups in countries as diverse as Egypt, Turkey, Iran, Indonesia, and Pakistan in recent decades. The Iranian Revolution in the late 1970s brought a militant Islamic regime to power, as did a civil war in Afghanistan in the 1980s. Saudi Arabia has also used its oil wealth to fund missionary activities aimed at spreading Wahhabism, a strict, conservative, purist form of Islam that is popular in Saudi Arabia. The Saudis have spent tens of millions of dollars promoting Wahhabism around the world in recent decades. Last, but certainly not least, the 19th and 20th centuries have been periods of tremendous change for Judaism. Jews have experienced anti-Semitism in, in, in many countries. The worst example of this, of course, was the Holocaust of the Nazi regime in Germany's systematic genocide of around six million Jews during the Second World War. While the Holocaust was one of the most traumatic events in Jewish history, it was followed by a moment of great triumph for Jews. Jews who were known as Zionists had, had long advocated for a Jewish nation state uh, beginning in the late 19th century. In 1948, Zionist settlers in Palestine established the state of Israel as a Jewish state. With the establishment of Israel in 1948, Jews came to have a nation state of their own in their own ancestral homeland. However, Arabs deeply resented this and viewed it as another example of European colonialism. And this in turn led to a series of Arab-Israeli wars, all of which Israel has won. Tensions between Arabs and Israelis continue to this day. These tensions do have a religious element, Jews against Muslims, and control of the city of Jerusalem, a city that is considered holy by Jews, Christians, and Muslims alike. So let's draw some conclusions. The secularization thesis that religion naturally and necessarily fades with modernization has been popular among many scholars since the time of the Enlightenment. And this secularization thesis is true in part. However, it is also simplistic and has many limitations, including, Eurocent including Eurocentrism. And as Mikey, Michael Burley argues, many movements that see, that see themselves as purely secular, such as Marxism, may not be as secular as they think. World religions have not gone away in the modern world. In many ways, they have adapted to the modern world and have used modern technology to more precisely define their beliefs as well as to grow and to spread. The future of world religions remains to be seen, but it may well be that religion is simply part of the human condition, something, sometimes for good and sometimes for bad. I'll stop here. Thanks for watching.